thank you. About my personal connections and personal memories, uh, for me it wasn't four decades, uh, but basically as a university uh, student I uh, worked as a surveyor or as, as uh, uh, conducting interviews and uh, questionnaires uh, uh, for uh, Hankish's research and the completion of such uh, 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 questionnaires basically took uh, hours. And we also met uh, many times in conferences, and I followed his work, and later on I also joined uh, his work. So traps, that's what I gave. Uh, 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 so basically traps and mice, the uh, traps of uh, late socialism to the traps of globalization. And I think Honkish as uh, uh, from many disciplines, uh, uh, he followed these uh, the dilemmas and uh, also formulated his own. And he had his own dilemmas because he was a, a well-known uh, person. For example, uh, the position he actually uh, had in uh, Hungarian television. So he was always uh, 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 well-known uh, in the public life. And the uh, gap between uh, uh, science and politics uh, had to uh, uh, bridge that gap. For Honkish, which, uh, for example, Max Weber talked about, Honkish uh, basically continuously uh, uh, was walking along this bridge from one side to the other and back. And from a philological point of view, I, was, I couldn't really explain explore that, but I think right from the start he had a classic political uh, 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 science knowledge as well, and later through sociology and political sciences, social uh, uh, sciences, international relations, game theory, a lot of these areas that he explored uh, without ever saying that he labeled him, uh, he, himself as a uh, politologist. But these areas he was uh, uh, familiar. Philip Schmidt is here, Schoff Mirei, Max Gaza, Philip Wittermann. These are prominent uh, uh, social scientists and even Hungarians. Uh, Chaba Gombar, Laszlo Lengyel, with whom he worked for a long time. And he was widely known uh, outside of Hungary as well. Also prior to 89, but especially after the change of the regime, which uh, I'm never really kind of try to answer why, but I think he was one of the few that the the problems and issues of the change of regime actually he was uh, uh, he already had put forward these issues and questions even before many years before the change of uh, of these thematic, uh, the the changes democratic changes because he was very clearly aware that how things were going they uh, couldn't survive for very long so i should say that uh, in 89, they had his book, uh, uh, I think it was published in both in English and Hungarian, the, the East uh, uh, European uh, um, problems and uh, issues, and he explores that uh, to great depth. I'm not sure if he was the only one. Uh, I think there was a French author in the 70s who already f uh, foreseen uh, the breakup of the Soviet Union, but Hankish, although he didn't say as such that it will break up, but he talked about social traps and dilemmas that already referred to the fact that later on something will happen. And the uh, transitology, uh, for example, and um, literature uh, discovered him. Uh, uh, as a person who kind of foreseen this. He taught uh, in universities here, for example, where I uh, worked as well in the political uh, sciences department in uh, at University's law school and also uh, abroad. But uh, he was so busy as a researcher, he didn't really took on uh, full positions. Uh, I think it was just for one year that he worked there uh, full time. Uh, so we can also consider him a politologist. But his students and uh, later 
uh, Lac Le Bus, for example, who were very close to, we can call him a sociologist as well, but he was very close to politology as well. So he actually had a knowledge, a classical politology knowledge, and he uh, covered many areas and uh, applied uh, politology as well as theoretical politology. So I think uh, a Hungarian politology uh, owes him a lot and basically even before the change of regime uh, uh, he uh, he foreseen this and he discussed this and afterwards basically among others he discussed the, the dilemmas again and the maybe the the dead ends that uh, uh, the change the democratic changes could lead to so for example they widen the 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 crisis the the cultural crisis and the social crisis but there are the certain points that we can see where he uh, like a he was a a, a public personality a well known personality but he always uh, was a, a a very like a civilian kind of a person uh, and for political science, his uh, work is very relevant, and many of his work, is, I, I don't even want to list uh, all these uh, works, uh, uh, I think, uh, connected to the, the classic uh, theories. Rousseau and Kant, I think, I can find uh, connections with, uh, and... Uh, Uh, the dichotomy, autonomy, dilemmas. I mean, f for me, at least Rousseau and Kant, uh, uh, there's a connection that we can see. He was also uh, uh, had an uh, uh, approach uh, from structuralism and also uh, theoretical research, theoretical analysis, uh, structural uh, controversies. These are two different. Uh, schools within uh, sociology, so the systemized and structural approach and the process analysis, uh, social uh, uh, studies, they, they, he, he uh, embraced both. He also was very fond of the, uh, game theory, and I think these, uh, at least in the 80s, these were new ideas, theor theories in Hungarian science, which uh, uh, ba basically made all his work neutral and acceptable. There's, uh, I think all of his manuscripts was ready for publishing because the language he used, the rationalism, the persuasive powers uh, that he had, he was acceptable uh, uh, within the uh, 80s of uh, Hungary uh, who were characterized by uh, new reforms, but also he was deeply rooted or, or he was uh, close to the, the, uh, the uh, underground movement as well, or even uh, he was searching for alternatives. So was very cleverly, the, he managed to uh, uh, be stay uh, uh, critical, but also publishable at the, in the 80s. Very few people uh, could achieve that in Hungary uh, those days. So also the contractual, uh, uh, for example, new social contract that he talks about, that also uh, points toward Rousseau and Kant saying that we should construct new structures uh, which uh, is very difficult to reconcile with the analytical or critical approach. But he managed to do that even when he created the reformist movement next to it or behind that there was uh, uh, another approach that uh, he could uh, w use. So also corporatism theory, uh, um, Hankish uh, was one of the first talking about it, or the pluralism, uh, uh, the legitimization problems. Uh, he was the one raising these issues even in the 80s, or at the time in the communist regime, obviously, was a criticism. But the way he put it forward again, it was able to, uh, uh, to, to raise this issue. And 
the farmers and informal societies, uh, the contrast uh, between these was another area that he focused on public interest and individual interest and the relationship between the two, that again a recurring theme in his work, also the myth and reality, which was in the 90s, one of the titles, uh, uh, I don't want to list all the titles. He was also searching uh, for the balance of rationalism and irrationalism. I think the approach for balance, uh, like the history and structure, uh, uh, reality, history, and all this. And what was, again, interesting, and in what is his take on what we see today in the world? Uh, world history, world politics, uh, where all the big uh, analysts uh, now show the deep problems in the stability of society. For example, yesterday in the debate, we talked about it, the loss of uh, or the decrease of rationality, uh, various or or authoritarian tendencies uh, getting stronger. He touched up upon these issues not only in relation to Hungary, but also in the great powers, Western and Eastern powers, and also Some of these experiments basically uh, are scary, even when it just uh, the the uh, represented by just an individual person. But what would he uh, uh, say about Trump now, who is not a Hitler, obviously, but uh, the irrationality is very clear. So I would really be interested in in his take on not only in Hungary's situation, uh, current situation, but in the world as well. So these tendencies of almost like the tip of the iceberg, they uh, coming more and more prominent. And also searching for the right elite, which is a recurring uh, issue that he talked about in 89, saying that the, about the Marxist elite and saying that are they the uh, right elite at the right place, who are the members of the elite, which uh, stratum of society can be the elite, how can they regain their historical role and identity, and how can they actually catch up with history, that's what how he put it. So searching for the right uh, and the adequate elite, that again is a very topical issue today, and again I would be uh, very interested to, uh, to hear his opinion. So. On successful uh, uh, cases that he had, uh, so he always uh, uh, continued. Thank you.